Thomas, my dear young woman, it wasn't all that long ago and the king's carriage stopped exactly here to water his horses. Now these diggings are no place for a young lady to be alone. Will you accompany me? It will give me great pleasure. Will you do me the honour of joining me for a glass of fine sherry? Only a glass of sherry? <laughs> Grand. <laughs> now you must tell me your price. You fancy me, eh? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to make love in the Grecian way. You vulgar old rogue. Away with you. All the crown's jewels couldn't buy that. Get out of my sight. You knave! <laughs> what a fine gentleman he turned out to be. I spend all my night guzzling bitters with the old sot and not a guinea to show for it. Calm yourself, Sally. What did he want of you? Never you mind. Oh, I suppose it was something odd. But you have a living to make. You can't afford to be so choosy. Yes, it's easy for you to no, say that. So nerdy, just love. mind your own affairs. You make me nervous, no, you bloody cock. that's cuck. not true. Be a lady and I'll keep you company. It'll be safer in my cab than alone in Chelsea. You could cross paths with... Then no more, Sally. <laughs> I'll wager he can't see a two-guinea night with me, alone. That's your choice. So it is. And I choose to walk rather than set foot in your nosy cab. Good night. Who are you looking for, huh? Oh, my child, I look for no one. I only wait for my death. If you would help me, my child, a pittance would be welcome. It's small gifts from charitable friends which hold my body and soul together till God claims the latter. Ah! Uh, you understand? A warming glass you would like? Yes, my child, it's a cold world we live in. A pint then helps an old man. <laughs> God will bless you, dear child, and I wish you a long and happy life, God willing. Fare you well. Thank <laughs> you. 
my child. What has he done to you? My child. You brought me a beautiful doll. Yes. Ah, doctor. Mm -mm. She's so pretty. I'm coming, doctor. Laura, huh? come and assist me. All broken? Yes, continue. Nothing of that. Must I pitch this one in the Thames too? Yes, as usual. Will you return soon? I can't tell you, good woman. I never know. So don't ask me.
<laughs> Good morning. How's it go with you this morning, Flora? You sleep well? Aye. You might be after a lovely spot to take your breakfast now. No, it's breakfast for the fishes that I picked this morning. It'll fatten them up for your supper tonight. <laughs> <laughs> so would you want to be sharing a fat fish? Or would you share my bed, your beauty? <laughs> <laughs> Doctor. Oh, finally it's you. Good morning. Oh, you've been out on a sick call all night as usual, but you can't go on this way. If you keep working night and day, you'll be ill. Remember, physician, cure thyself. Come in and relax. You'll have a nice hot cup of tea. Thank you. Your patients can wait. Oh, are there so many waiting? Yes, but come in first. They've saw the passageway with their muddied boots. Why do you waste your time doctoring those ruffians? You should have a richer clientele. This tea will perk you up. Do you take milk and sugar? No, this will be fine. Won't you have a piece of pie? No, but thank you. But you should eat something. I made this myself with pure hog fat. No, this is fine. It's an old family recipe, a Cornish pasty. You have need of the nourishment. Uh, Mrs. Baxter. Yes? I believe my monthly rent is overdue and I am unable to pay you just now. Oh, you really mustn't concern yourself about it. Don't worry, good doctor. You're always thinking of other people. Never of yourself. You're too charitable with your time and medical genius. Oh, my dear Mrs. Baxter, I am much obliged. It's my pleasure. Ah, good morning, my friends. Mother to good see you. Good morning. Good morning. I will be with you directly. Don't hurry, Doctor. Yes, don't hurry yourself, Doctor. We can wait a bit longer to get well. So, my little one, you're not afraid of the doctor? No. Who's first? I believe it's me. Is it your leg again? Uh, yes. Get up on the examining table. Oh, uh, oh, God bless me. What an ache. How oh, this leg hurts me. Hmm. But well, you'll fix it up for me, Doctor, eh? Uh, 
I'll do my best. It seems better. that rotten canker. Well, now, Charlie, even the devil wouldn't want this putrid abscess. Oh, ah. oh that burns. There. That's all. Oh, I feel better, Doctor. Hmm, fine. You should come back in three days for me to examine you. Uh, yes, I'll come back, huh? But, uh, I've been under my luck. Only have a havens. I understand how it is. You'll pay me when you're able. I would have something to ask you, Doctor. Uh, you're so generous, you must have a deal of money. Huh? I bet you have a treasure in silver. And so then? That is my concern. Uh, no offence, Doctor. Move on. Move on, ladies and gentlemen. There's nothing here for you to give. Uh... Did you see that? All Blimey, right, it looks like blood. Move on. More of the work of old Jack the Ripper. Doggle. Scotland Yard's finest. Exactly correct, sir. I regret Not that you'll find nothing here to titillate you, my friend. Oh, Inspector, all is well, ready. Where are the witnesses? They are waiting for you in the pub with Sergeant McCullough. A mixed lot there. At the pub? Don't worry. I warned the barmaid not to serve them any liquor. Uh, let's go. Come along, Miller. Inspector, sir. There's a Miss Higgins and an old man. Here's the inspector. Stand up. Too much. Young man, it's a lady I am, and I'll only stand up for the Queen of England, you know. Just so, me lady. This young man must have seen service in the colonies. Take that witness into the next room for questioning. Right away, sir. Come along, grandfather. Let me help you. Sit down here. I am Selby of Scotland Yard. John Pritchard, sir. Mr. Pritchard talked with the victim, Sally Brown, only minutes before she was killed. Just so, sir. Just before she was murdered. You believe, then, she was murdered? But I know she was murdered. My senses are twice as acute than most men, and I have a sixth sense. I recognized the screams of a dying woman. First, he heard the screams of the woman not far away, and then he became aware of a struggle. He heard soon after an appalling shriek followed by the striking of a knife, and then the effort of one carrying a body away. I imagine you doubt all that I've reported. These events are too precise for a man who cannot see. Remember that the ears and nose of the blind do the work of the eyes. With you, for example, I'm able to recognize you again at any time and any place in the world. I've captured the essence of you, that quality which defines you. Amongst ten men, you believe you could identify the murderer without a possible doubt? Yes, I'm sure of that. The murderer, I feel, cannot control his compulsion to kill. I was able to sense that he was almost as terrified as his victim. Isn't that odd? He was consumed with strong emotion. In fact, a madman. Uh, yes, insane. But a sort of madness which is puzzling strange. A madness which could be transformed into brilliance. The aura of this man gave me no negative feelings. On the contrary, he seemed as one possessed. Not a sadistic killer. You've told me very little. Well then, if you want more details of the murderer, I can help you. He's slight, strong, vigorous, but not a manual labourer. Certainly an intellectual. Why is that? His scent, it was a strange odor I can remember exactly now. A rare blend of old books and fresh fragrance. Do you know anything about spices, Inspector? No, nothing at all. When one works with spices, the nose becomes very acute. A fact I've ignored. The Indians are the finest connoisseurs of spices and most refined mixtures. You must have served in India. I learned much from the Indians while there. Wisdom of the East, an extraordinary education.
You spent a long time there? Yes, many long years. I'll never forget India as it was there I lost my sight accidentally. Then the opportunity to perceive the different odors of all the spices was presented to me. It developed my sense of smell to an amazing degree. The murderer smelled of several familiar odors, expensive soap, sweat, and very fine woolen clothes, and mild Turkish tobacco. Uh, and also an odor inspector that you could recognize with much ease, I think. Alcohol. Yes, of course, you smell of it. Oh, but that's an easy one. What I detected was a medicinal alcohol, and then a real surprise, for I also caught a whiff of a rare medicinal plant of India. It transported me back to the colonies. In England, it's found only in a botanical garden. It is called Acmo. Inspector? Yes? I really don't like to interrupt you, Inspector. Still, I arrived before he did. I can't wait longer. I left my shop in the care of an apprentice who is very young. The poor wench doesn't know the merchandise. I must go back there. Miss Higgins, sit down. I haven't time to sit down. Let's get on with it. If you have any questions to ask me, please do so. I was informed you'd seen the killer. I simply perceived an abductor. And he was carrying a poor girl in his arms. He looked a small black goblin. I saw no more than a silhouette moving through the gloom of the foreboding night. That's all. All cats are grey by night. Soon the fog began to roll and I could see no more of him. You must have heard a scream, the sound of a struggle. I heard a girl's voice crying in the night. First two screams and then a horrible shriek which pierced through my body, leaving me weak with terror. Then I believed I heard another voice. Was it the old gent? Yes, but did you see the man kill the girl? No, it was too dark and much too far away. Although when he took her body in his arms, she wasn't moving or moaning at all. You certainly must recall something else. Do you want me to make up something? Of course not. Could you identify the killer for us? I'm not sure. Can you tell me or not? Well, who can say? Only you can. Then everything's up to me, is it? Well, I'd like to tell you that crazy lunatic must be caught quickly. If I wasn't sure, an innocent man might be wrongly accused and I only saw his shadow. Please, Inspector, I must leave. Oh, Inspector, I have a little notion shop on Old Compton Road. Bring your wife around. I've some fine linens, beautiful and not too expensive. I would have you find me a wife first, dear lady. Hmm, a fine fellow like you, not married. So why does a lovely woman such as you remain on wet? Now, I've become too straight laced for marriage. And now, ta-ta. My thanks to you. It certainly has been a real pleasure. Farewell, Miss Higgins. And pas de play, and one, and two, front, side, back, échangé, gracefully now, and one, and two, and three, you're doing better. Way down, and one, and two, and three, point your toes, gracefully now, one, and two, and three, pas de char, and one, and two, and three, Cynthia, extend your knee. Good, oui. Well done, Cynthia. But what of your left foot? You mustn't let it drop, dear child. You must pay more attention, Cynthia. A perfect point. That's better. Ah, we have a visitor. Come now, mademoiselle. I can't believe you're paying me a visit. Why should you remain angry with me? You were angry. No. Well, it was your fault. You came just to say that? No, not at all. I, I had to see you again. Cynthia, I must talk to you. It's very difficult for me to talk to you now because you're disrupting the rehearsal, my dear. Yes, of course, the usual. Bally means everything to you. You never think of anything else. You never have time for us or thoughts for me at all. Your life is only the dance. I have important work, a murderer to catch. Now don't bring that up again. I know you find it amusing. Well, you and I agreed to separate. We shouldn't see each other anymore. I make you unhappy. We must reflect on it. You've decided. But I can't live without you. You have a problem? Yes, with you. You must play cock of the walk. Very well, but I refuse to be your biddy. My career is too important to me. You must treat me as your equal. Maybe then I could be of help. I know that you're having a deal of trouble. It's that killer again, the Ripper. Mm. Cynthia, we're waiting for you. Now, listen. When will you be done here? I don't know, but it will be in about an hour. All right, I'll wait. Here, beside me.
Do you remember me? You called me to you. I am your slave. I'm your dream girl. For a guinea, you can come along. You can make love to me all night. Are you shy, Dullard? <laughs> Hurry. You've wanted me ever since the night you saw me coming out of the ballet studio. You're possessed by me. You undress me with your eyes. I am exactly like your mother. A whore. <laughs> I'll be yours for a crown. For a guinea, I'll do anything. I can be rather naughty. I'll make love à la Française. Would you like that? Follow me. You can do anything you want with me. Don't be such a prude. I know your vilest secrets. You won't be sorry. I'll satisfy your most disgusting whims. And now this lustful lord leapt from his bed, is madly tossed between desire and dread, bewitched with lust's foul charm by brain's sick, rude desire. The love of a Jezebel is most exciting. Come, my love, I'm yours. Hurry, you desire. Don't suppress your passions any longer. <laughs> Darling. I must go out. Well, not going out at this hour, good doctor. Yes, a matter of urgency. Oh, surely your patient can survive ten more minutes, no matter how concerned you are. You'd do better to wait and call in the morning. Mrs. Baxter, I really must go now. I'd do anything to keep you from going out again tonight. I'll take that. Please. I must leave immediately. But, doctor, you're very angry with me. You're overtired. A cup of hot tea will calm you now. Sit down, Doctor. But, Doctor, sit down. I pray thee. There. Lemon, Doctor, or sugar? Hmm? Did you hear me? Mm, pardon? Lemon? Yes. There you are. I'll have a sip as well. Tell me, Doctor, are you content with your lodgings here? Uh... Well, they're not luxurious, I know. It matters not at all. Very well. Good. Doctor, if you could afford fancier lodgings, would you remain in my house? Or would you look for more spacious quarters? But why these questions? Hmm? Because I've given some thought to our little talk yesterday morning. Do you recall how I asked you to take more care of your own well-being? I know full well you live a lonely life with very little affection. You need a friend. Uh. You're a man of the finest sensibilities. Being all alone does not suit you. But I could be helpful, if you would allow me to. But you make it so difficult. You mean a great deal to someone. Oh, I don't speak of passion, but rather of a sincere friendship based on the esteem and respect that a man of your nature requires. You should save a small part of your life for your own personal happiness. 
Why must you think only of others? Oh. Now, we'll have our tea. Enough of your tea parties now! Please excuse me. You mustn't take on so. I didn't mean to hurt you. I'm overtired. You must try to forgive me. Do women always disturb you so? With me? I don't have time. Do you fear it will cost you too much? No, that doesn't matter. Well, then, tarry a while. If you insist. You shan't be sorry. I'll do my best for you. A fancy distinguished gent like you, my lord. Are you so timid, my lord? You should take courage. Maggie, open up. What's all the commotion? I can't say. I have such a carry on by Jeeves. Is anyone with her? I 
think so. Jean? It seems they've gone on. Let's take a look. Blimey, they must have eaten quite well today. They're not biting. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Charlie! You can't make a decent meal on that. You're oh, better than nothing. Hey! Oh, I got me a nice one on the hook. Uh, uh, I must have skinned <laughs> the beast. You jerked him up too fast. I think he's taking the hook again. Yeah, maybe you caught what's left of the beast. <laughs> what's this? He looks like a... Blimey. Hey, Charlie. Good morning, Inspector. Well, you're in a fine mood. Anything new to report? Not that I know of, sir. All right. Oh, I almost forgot there's a madman waiting to see you. What does he want me for? Uh... Well, he refused to tell me what his big secret is. He will only reveal his information to you, Inspector, not to a subordinate like me. Huh. So you're the chief? Yes, I'm the chief inspector in this district. Mm -hmm. uh, you must find old Jack the Ripper, then. You've got a job cut out for you. Yes, I'm aware of that. I'll ring you uh, up later. My name's Charlie. And your last name? Same as me, Dad. Mum didn't know him. So it's Charlie, then? Whatever you say. Your profession? Fisherman. Hmm. I'll see what fish I can. I eat them. I'll give them away. So I'll write no profession. Bugger you, blaggard. Charles, you've something important to tell. To tell you? Mm, not much to tell you, sir. Something to show you. Out of the Thames. This is why I came to see you. Where was that found? I myself caught it on my fishing pole off Benham. Tell us, where did you find this precisely? Off the bridge. I think this is another job of your Jack the Ripper. I'm sure. Blimey, you'll find nothing. Huh? This will show you the way. He sliced this and exactly as the others. After that, he threw in the river. Look at this hand carefully. Only a day or two she rested in the water. It takes a fisherman to know these things. We catch a lot of strange things on our lines. Give this ring a look. It could lead you to the killer. It's like new. If I were you, me, I'd be dredging the Thames for more evidence. You must pay mind to the current. You'll find the rest of the remains a long way down the river. Thank you for your advice. Oh, but it's nothing, really. I'm glad to be of service. Where can we find you if we need you? Well, now, you want to know where I stay? Hmm. Me, I move around, here or there. There's a dolphin you'll find me, like us not. <laughs> find me a bite now and then. Just a small bite or two. <laughs> Cheers. Good day to you. <laughs> you see, Sergeant, I was to rights. It was a thief I should have seen after all. You could say I gave him a hand, hmm? Hmm. You'll mind your manners next time. I'm at your service, Your Excellency. Oh, mm, I almost forgot. Wouldn't there be a reward for returning lost objects to the authorities? <laughs> it could encourage honesty. Well, but Your Excellency, the very best reward a man can receive is the esteem of Scotland Yard. That means nothing. I was expecting something more. I have a larger cat to settle, a dolphin. Hello, Mr. Green. I have need of your best chemist. It's to analyze an exotic gift I've only now received. Yeah. Mm. 
Sergeant, we'll summon Sally Brown's mother. She might identify the ring on that hand. Yeah. And inform the Thames Patrol. I must have a team to dredge that river now. We could turn up some new evidence about the murderer. Yes, that is to say, we'll put our hands on him. Oh, begging your pardon, Inspector. <laughs> Quiet down, please, ladies. Ladies and gentlemen, we've called you together to help us employ a new method of police detection, which we believe may aid in our search for the sadistic killer, popularly known as Jack the Ripper. Inspector. <laughs> Let me introduce the artist, <laughs> Mr. Willoughby. You'll give him your descriptions of the murderer, and he will draw a portrait of the man. Patiently, he'll portray his features following your descriptions. Each one of you have remarked special characteristics, a small man, a dark man, and such like. Especially you who think you've seen him at Pike's Hole. Ah, but she saw him at the last, that angel genie. An angel is it? With the, the devil in her soul. Hole. Miss Maggie, will you describe this man you've mentioned? Yes, now, if I remember well, he fancied Miss Sally Brown was always ogling her. This man was quite lordly, could have been a peer. He had a distinguished profile, quite noble. He was of ordinary stature. He was always dressed in sombre colours and wore a long cloak, if I recollect. Fair-haired or dark? Oh, he was quite fair-haired, streaked with grey, and he wore it rather long and shaggy. What of his facial features? Oh, la, I can't say. He was slender-faced with a long nose and a broad forehead. Did he resemble the portrait Mr. Willoughby's been sketching? No, that's likely. Yet there's something not quite right in this sketch. The nose is too short, the eyes too prominent. I really can't say. Thank you, miss. Someone must recall other details that might assist us. Give this sketch careful attention, please. Try to remember. Ponder on it. And you, especially the ladies who work at the hole. You have seen him. We're counting on you. Concentrate on bringing that man's face to life. Oh, he's bloody strange. I've seen this man at the pub often. Yet, but for all that, I couldn't begin to tell you the form of his mouth or if his eyes are brownish or blue. Do you have reason to believe this man was with Sally the night she was killed? Perchance. Perchance. He snuck around for most of the evening. No, no. I was right nearby Sally that night. I observed the man very well. He wasn't a regular, but a gent she'd had for the night. It's true, he wore dark-coloured clothes. Yes, but he was well-rounded. And he was also wearing spectacles. Yeah, she's absolutely correct. I was waiting outside the pub all night long. The fat man was drunk when they came out of Pikes. They chatted a bit before they had a tip, and then he made off alone. Seems he had made an improper suggestion. Blimey, Sally was angry because he wanted a queer type of rut. Bloody swine. Hmm, a queer type of rut. Collins, can't you give us more details about that? Ah! Please, there is at least one lady present. Must you pursue this any longer? I'll wait outside if you'll permit me to, Inspector. No. Go sit down. And, dear lady, you will not interfere with these proceedings. I decide what questions to pursue. You must know the ways of the world at your age, madam. Oh, you can't talk to me Oh, yes, way. I can. Sit down. You're the Crown Witness. Continue. Well, um... You said a queer type of rut. I don't know what he suggested. <gasps> Sally never told me that bit. She was possessed with fury, but I began to jolly her out of her mood. I even offered her a ride in my cab, gifty-like. She said she preferred to trot on alone. She was a big-hearted lass. Hey, one of the Lord's own angels. Let's continue. You described a heavy gentleman. Uh -huh. Not the man at all that you described to us. What do you say, Miss Higgins? That one is the murderer. What do they know, these scarlet women? I'm too bad to for runs the pipe's hole. You old crone, you can't insult a lady like that. Hold ladies. I'm inclined to agree with Miss Higgins. Here's our murderer. <laughs> Goes without a sign. Ladies, if you please. Now, can you suggest any changes, Miss? It appears a splendid portrait, perfectly executed, though it lacks authenticity. Let me then suggest, um, that man was slender and just a mite taller, I recall. To know him so well, she must have been his sweetheart. <laughs> She sees him in her dreams. <laughs> Silence, ladies. <laughs> oh, good. It's him for sure. There's your killer. I know which she is. Now, we've described two different individuals. One is the killer. Inspector, might I add something? Yes, Pritchard. I have the impression that you're right. We speak of two men, as you say, Inspector. In fact, I believe the one the lady 
mentioned, the same one which Maggie has seen with Sally at the Pike's Hole, this man is the true murderer. Proof I have that the man who insulted Sally is not the killer. I have a strong sense of smell. That's the reason why I know he couldn't have done this murder. But how can you say that? The cabbie told us the gentleman coming out of the pub was drunk as a lord. Yes, that follows. I'll remind you that uh, Sally's killer smelled of the kind of alcohol we find at the chemist and not the sort you go out to drink at a pub, I swear it. Inspector, the man's mouth was not so wide and the cheeks sunken in. Yes, that's it. He had a slight dimple on his chin, some wrinkles on his forehead and between his brows. His hair was straight with some unruly locks and rather large ears. He wore a high, straight collar. His shoulders were narrow. Oh, well, that looks like him. Indeed, he's the one. But I'd swear that the night Sally was killed, he didn't appear at Pike's Hole. Some time passed. He even sat at my table. He was a nice sort. Upper class, you know, he asked me for a stroll and offered me money. I refused to go. Wasn't it enough money to interest you? No, he wanted to give me a lofty amount. I uh, was obliged to refuse his invitation. It's the monthly, you know. I'm that fussy. I would never take a man oh, on. There are things ladies should never bring up in in front of the other sex. I wouldn't lie about it. I have to tell the truth to the police. It is too old to remember how it was when she was young. You know, she quit flying her flag the day of Waterloo. <laughs> Watch your tongues, ladies. Hush now. Respect the dignity of Scotland Yard. Inspector Selby. What is it? Yes. All right. At your service, sir. Thank you, Miller. Mr. Pritchard, your remarkably keen nose made me sceptical at first. However, embedded in the hand of Sally Brown was found what seemed to be a pine needle. When analysed, it was revealed to be from the tropical plant Acmau. This plant is distinguished by its unusual bitter scent. The very odour you detected as you approached the assassin. Charlie, tell me, this man, have you ever seen him? Well, let's see, I may be seen him somewhere. But I couldn't say for sure where or when, damn it. Hmm. You must forgive me for stopping around unannounced, but I had to see you. You've had a difficult day. One could say that. Oh, I've forgotten my bag. Don't worry, I'll fetch it for you. I love to fetch and carry for you. to sketch passed by here. He stared at me so. He went that way. Ah, unhappy me, sir. Excuse me, I made a mistake. You should be careful who you pitch into. Sorry, sir. Give Young me. sir, you're addressing Lord Salisbury, I'll have you know, by the way.
this Austrian give some time to this mean little pup? Cheers to her! Oh, Why do you the bully to entertain us? <laughs> <laughs> she stirs the blood. She excites me. <laughs> Okay, it's beautiful. But why wait for me out here? Get in. The madding crowd and all the smoke. Oh, I see. You prefer not to mix with commoners. Let's Where go, Gideon. Well, my lord. Well, it'll surprise you. Mm. Mentioned to pay me five guineas. What must I do to earn it? I pray you no more, kind sir. You'll see. Ah, because I don't want you to do me a strange turn as one gent did. So long ago, an old dear I was with brought me to the cemetery. The madman wanted to have me there on top of his wife's tomb because it made him potent. <laughs> I hope that's not your taste. No, that's not my desire. Ah, love. Mm. Forest? There's such a fog. <laughs> You're lost, maybe. Let's go back to town. No. You frighten me. Turn back. This isn't fun at all. Drive me back, please, my lord. Remind me well. Sir, say something. This is a gloomy place. You mustn't take your pleasure with me here.
that's enough for today. You've been working so hard. That's the best way to help you forget your troubles. One hears that. You'll enjoy going on tour. <laughs> You're still seeing Anthony? Mm. Well. He's out of luck with you, and he's failed Scotland Yard in his search for the killer. People don't take kindly to an inspector who dallies with a beautiful ballerina instead of pursuing villains. The letters to the Times are filled with accounts of bits and pieces of ladies discovered here and there. They're crying for Selby's blood. You, Charlie. We must have a bit of a chat. At this hour? Yes, I went to some trouble to come here at this hour and not to be seen coming here either. But why? You'd be wise to talk with me. And about what, pray tell? Ah. Things of some importance. You see, I might be able to help you. You're talking in riddles. Well, if I was you, Doctor, there could be some nasty secrets I'd want to hide, well and good. This is most confusing. I'm very tired. And Mrs. Baxter has Wait, it. that's not all. I might tell you old Jack the Ripper, see? I wouldn't fancy you would want that, and yet I'm truly obliged to put her on guard. What do you say, Doctor? Do you want me to warn her? But I can keep the mouth shut, but I have proof. Precious proof. How much? I'll drop out of sight, eh? Five hundred guinea will do.
Doctor? Doctor? Is that you? Excuse me. New fallen woman on the prowl? Aren't you afraid? You're just the sort old Rip enjoys. But don't be anxious. I'll keep my eye on you. You're easy on the eye. <laughs> yes, with you nearby, I'll surely feel protected. You may trust me, but what shall my reward be? <laughs> Beautiful child, what might I offer you? Maybe a bottle of champagne? No, my lord, I don't fancy champagne. Oh. Good evening, Rupert. Inspector. Uh, this is the mother. Why didn't you send for me directly? You had need to catch up on your sleep, Inspector. Well, a gardener from Kensington Park has reported the discovery of some women's clothing, blood-stained and torn. <laughs> then Madame Hoffman arrived to inform us that her daughter is missing, one Marika Hoffman. She is an Austrian who entertains at Pike's Hall, singing and dancing, so her mother tells us. God help. Good evening. I'm Inspector Selby. Has your daughter been missing for long? Yeah. She's been gone for more than a That's day. That's nothing. She may be with some friends. No. False hope. She's lost forever. She always returned home to me after her work. <laughs> Although she lost her virtue, she knew I would worry about her. My child really was a good daughter. Why did I bring her to this wicked city? <laughs> After all, what do you care? What is one poor, more or less? While you and your friends were dining in Mayfair with fancy women, my child was maybe being killed in Whitechapel. She might have met Jack the Ripper! Oh, I'm wasting my time talking to you, good dear. You're just another whore, you all. Why is that killer still free? Why haven't you caught him? He should have been hung before now. Find him, you hear? The poor folks never receive justice. No, your justice is for the rich. Who cares about us? Uh, help her out. She's hysterical, that woman. Little wonder. Poor woman, I can understand why. Hello? This is Inspector Selby's office. Yes, he's here. Just a second. Hello? No. 
And she still isn't home? I will. A missing girl again, Inspector. Cynthia hasn't returned home. Don't be afraid, my child. A pittance for a blind man. Yes. Thank you, my lady, for your kind generosity. Why are you out alone at this hour? I look for someone. You'd do well to take care, dear child. Someone in the night is not looking for you. Best return to your loved ones. Why do you say that? You are not the girl you are portraying. I can smell the scent of fine soap and lavender. But the costume you wear smells as though it was stored away. I believe you're wearing a disguise. As if you're playing a role, a part in a dangerous play, and your speech gives you away. The speech of a refined woman, not a tart. Be careful, my child. This is a dangerous district. <laughs> you don't belong here. the bell. It's closing time. Sorry, love. Oh, just a talk up, please. Business is slow. Well, come in. You're a real gent. This filthy fog. Yes, it gives me a bad bellyache, this bloody fog. What would you like? A brandy, I'd say. What brand, then? Well, any brand. I care not. As you say. No one around. Going bad for you? Yes, it all goes bad by me now. You're new at this. Mm. I'm off to figure the day's take. It's been so slow, it can't take me long. So drink up quickly, my love. Good evening. You look familiar. Do I know you? It's possible we've crossed paths before. I'm happy to meet you again. Yes, so am I. Let us celebrate our reunion. Let's sit here. Well, would you like a rum, a brandy or champagne? A bit of champagne. Hmm. I'll fetch it. The barman's a friend. I'll order it. Is there another way out? Yes, that back door. Why? Run fast. Go call the police. Jack the Ripper is here. He's in the tavern. I know it's him, and while you go, I'll try to detain him. If you're sure, I'll go. Be careful.
have your orders. Stay here, sir. Inspector sir. Selby has commanded. Don't Please, let sir. anyone go in or out. Move back. Have the witnesses all arrived? Yes, Inspector. Where are they? Backstage. Thank you. Stand back, everyone. Make room. Clear the street. I order you to disperse this crowd. Stay back, please. This man, sir. So you made the report? Yes. I was just about to close when this girl arrived and asked me for something to drink. I was below when uh, the Ripper arrived. If you didn't see him, as you said, how did you know it was Jack the Ripper there? The girl seemed to be sure of it. She persuaded me to run to the police. I see. Is this the girl you talked to, here in this picture? Yes, she's the girl. I say, let me have a look. Of course. This was the girl. She arrived here alone. She spent her time here. She must have been looking for someone. She wasn't really looking for a customer. Who do you think she was looking for, Inspector? She was looking for Jack the Ripper. She's out of her mind. She only wanted to help me find the killer. Well, she found him. Yes, and now our task is to find her. I might have a tip for you, Inspector. I went to the apothecary garden a day ago when, lo and behold, I detected the scent. I smelled it once more in one of the greenhouses found back behind the gardens. Remember that scent of the tropical plant I detected on the killer? It can be found in that greenhouse. Let's get there quickly. Shameless whore, now I've found you. You wanted me dead. You tried to kill me, your child. I'll have my revenge. You slut. It wasn't the child, it was the man you destroyed. Why did you do it? You are my dearest enemy. Why must I love you so? I have to kill you. With your blood, my sins will wash away and you'll be purified. This bloody weapon will do the deed. No! But you love me. Why kill me then? Because you are a whore, mother. A corrupt oh. bitch. You must suffer over oh. and over again as I did when only a lad. Oh. You destroyed me. Oh. Oh. I went mad with your laughter. Bitch, oh. bitch. Why cry? Don't stop laughing. Be gay, you slut. You oh. laughed so well. When you shared your love, your bed with every rotter who came along, you laughed. When I was crying from shame, you laughed. When you caressed me with your filthy fingers, you laughed. When you made me sick with each caress, you laughed. A mother's hand so soft, so dear, is not made for men. I love you, mother.
Cynthia. Cynthia. <laughs> driven me mad with fright. But why did you do it? I think I must love you. Jenkins, stay with her. You run up there. Catch him. Surrender, you fiend. Give up, you're surrounded. We won't let you get away now. It's all over. There he is. It's over. You're a prisoner of the Crown. Scotland Yard has hooked a shark this time. Jack the Ripper. You'll never prove it. <laughs> 